morning. It is Saturday morning and you hear the echo. I'm pretty much alone here in the school, but I had to come in because yesterday afternoon when I was leaving, I learned that they were shutting off the electricity in the whole building for the weekend. Now, it's one thing if you turn off the lights, we can do without lights, but we have our fish tank, which has filters and coolers and all these different parts. And so, um, something was gonna have to happen. So luckily the cafeteria was not gonna be shut off. So Julio from here in the building offered to move the tank, as I put it on wheels this year, so that it would be closer to the kitchen and they can plug it in and it would still have electricity. But it would mean that it was being shut off. Now the chiller would go back on, but the filter for the water won't. So I had to come in today to make sure that that would happen and then check on the fish. So, see I'm in these empty echoey hallways. We're usually way up there in the front area. And Julio brought it all the way back here and plugged it back in with electricity from the kitchen, right? So here's our tank. It's right here by the, near, the, near the top of the stairs. I could hear something's humming. I already checked that, I already fixed that. But the first thing that I wanted to do was check and see what the temperature was in the water because that's gonna be the most important thing. We wanna keep that temperature down low, and sure enough, it's still around 12 degrees Celsius, which is in the low 50s Fahrenheit. And that's the important thing for these little guys, that and if there's water and, and air coming into the tank so that they can have oxygen. As long as the temperature stays similar and the oxygen wasn't cut off for too long, then they would be fine. They're not gonna know just what happened. They didn't know that they got wheeled down the hallway. Just like with people, traumatic events can have big effects. For these little guys, the trauma would be changes in temperature or being shooken around a lot or anything. But we can see just a quick look. They seem like they're okay, right? They don't know really what happened. It was a little bit of a change of temperature, but the water holds its temperature. So Julio got it back plugged in and it started, right? We can see the air bubbler is functioning. Those are the Fanny Lou fish. Say hello, Fanny, Fanny Lou fish. That's it. You're doing fine, right? Okay, now let's come over to the MS-118 fish. And ah, you look like you're doing fine too. All right. All right, so this is not it's a fish check. So just so you know, we're waiting. See how some of them are able to swim around and actually swim up? Before we start checking on whether they're ready to eat or not, about half of them, 50%. See that one guy at the top there, he's all the way up. Let me see if I can get that top open. Maybe we can see these guys. I can't do it with one hand. It's kind of vacuumed on. Oh, there we go. See how some of them are swimming up. They're getting close. Fanny Lou's do, still doing better than our batch. But you need about half of them to start coming to the top, looking for food before we start feeding them because we don't want that food to get in there and start decomposing. Okay, leave that here for a second. Our fish too. Now this is what I had to do.